Jack Benny program with his special guest, Andy Williams. very much ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the show you know last week when I finished my program I had a drive to Salt Lake City on business so naturally I had a drive back home again and I must say that even though it was pleasant and I love automobile trips see, I always have trouble I have the same trouble I always have I can't seem to find a decent place to eat now, I stopped at one place where they had a sign that said, you've seen them all over, that says, Good Eats. You know those signs, Good Eats. So I went right in, Good Eats. Now, I didn't mind that they had no tablecloths. I didn't mind the wooden knives and forks. I didn't even mind the cook pumping gas with one hand and frying eggs with the other. <laughs> But I must say, I was a little disheartened when I saw his wife flipping pancakes with a fly swat. <laughs> Good eats. And then there's another sign that kills me. It's always, you've seen this one, it's always on a place 80 miles from nowhere. And it says, Aunt Martha's world famous raisin pie. <laughs> Not just locally famous or not statewide, but world famous. <laughs> Can you imagine right now at the United Nations, the speaker is talking about the atomic bomb and the ambassador from Pakistan leans over and says to the ambassador from Russia, I wish he'd finish his speech so we can fly to East Bakersfield and have a piece of Aunt Martha's raisin pot. <laughs> I'll tell you, the next time I travel, I'm going back to what I usually do. Now, here's what I, here's what I do quite often. About 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the evening, you see, I pull up at some nice-looking house, and I walk up to the door, and I say, may I use your phone? Well, nine times out of ten, they recognize me. And so they invite me to have supper with them. <laughs> Believe me, there's nothing like a real home-cooked meal. That's good eats. <laughs> You know, and you can have a variety, too. Like, before you go up to the house, you see, you look at the name on the mailbox. If it's Hungarian, you have Hungarian food. If it's Chinese, you'll get Chinese food. You ring the doorbell you're hungry for. <laughs> now, that's the way to do it. And now, to get on with the program, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce my guest star, a young fellow who has become one of the country's most popular singing personalities, Mr. Andy Williams. <laughs> well, Andy, I want to say first of all that it's so nice having you on the show, and also I'd like to tell you that I've always liked your style of singing. You know? Well, thank you, Jack. Thank you very much. I mean, not only your style, but the way you... of singing, but the way you work. You know, you're so relaxed and casual about everything. Well, Jack, I've always had the theory that uh, to sell a song, you don't have to shout and belt all the time. You know, that's very true. Because I know that when I give concerts, the softer I play my violin, the more they appreciate it. I'll buy that. <laughs> You're welcome. Jack, I, I, uh, I want you to know one thing. What? I was really terribly surprised when your agent told me that you wanted me to be on your show. Why? Well, for years I've heard that you wouldn't hire anybody who had blue eyes. <laughs> I mean, I don't 
don't know who, who starts those ridiculous things. Well, have you ever had a guest on your show who did have blue eyes? Certainly. Now, Andy... Who? <laughs> I had, uh... Take your time. Well, I, I had Lassie. <laughs> and you want to know something? For your information, I had to pay her $8,000. $8,000? Yes. Gee, that's more than you're paying me. I know, but you see, when you don't like a deal, you merely complain. She bites. <laughs> now, Andy, the reason I wanted you on my show is because I wanted, you know, the people to hear you. You know, besides, besides saying... Yes? Mr. Benny, don't you remember us? Oh, for heaven's sakes, Andy, this is the president and vice president of the Jack Benny Fan Club. <laughs> Pasadena chapter. Uh, uh, but, uh, ladies, look, uh, you know, we're on the air right now. Yes, I, I know we're on the air. I, I can read the sign. Emma, that says exit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, ladies, you must have had something on your mind when you came up here. What is it? Well, the reason we came down was we heard Andy Williams was going to be on your show, and we felt that he's so clever and so cute and dressed in that sweater, and we decided to knit you one. You knitted me a sweater? Yes, uh-huh. And here it is. Oh, for heaven. Look at Andy. Look, it was my initials, a little small initial. And, and uh, done by my fan club. Oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. How long have you ladies been members? Oh, about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. We joined when they lowered the age limit. <laughs> Take off your jacket. Yes, All you right. Put on right. your sweater. Okay, help me. Anxious to try this on because it fits. Right. There you are. Make me look younger. Oh, it's a lot of work on this. It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's good. It's good. Oh, 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 it's good. What? Tilly did the initials. Oh, Tilly. Tilly worked uh -huh. on this. Oh, the whole club worked on it. Some of us knitted and some made buttonholes. Oh. <laughs> and, and Matilda contributed the buttons. Uh-huh. The, the buttons? They're her gallstones. <laughs> Sort of makes it personal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't even know she had them, but one day she dived into the pool and went right down to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now that we're here, Emma, ask you Mr. Williams. Come on, this. ask him. I'll ask him. I'll ask him. Dear. Well, ask like, me what, girls? He called us girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy that. Everybody's buying. Nobody's selling. <laughs> We wondered if... Oh, Emma, look. What? What? He's got blue eyes, too. <laughs> well, he certainly has. And they're even bluer than Mr. Benny's. They are not. <laughs> look, tell him what you want, ladies, and I'll take you back to your seats. Mr. Williams, would you do us a favor? Of course. Would you dedicate your number to the Pasadena Fan Club? Well, certainly. I'll be happy to do that. Emma, do you hear that? You thought he wouldn't do it. I know. Oh, I haven't been so relieved since the captain of the Titanic said, don't worry about a thing. <laughs> now, Andy, I'll take the ladies back to their seats. So you go into the number, you know, the one from your new uh, My Fair Lady album. Oh, all right, Jack. Okay. Here's your coat. Thank you. Oh, and... Bells it out, Andy. We like it that way. <laughs> I've grown accustomed to her face. She almost makes the day begin. I've grown accustomed to the tune She whistles night and noon Her smiles, her frowns, her ups Her downs are 
second nature to me now Like breathing out and breathing in I was serenely independent And content before we met Surely I could always be that way again And yet I've grown accustomed to her looks Accustomed to her voice Accustomed to her face I'm very grateful she's a woman And so easy to forget Rather like a habit one can always break And yet I've grown accustomed to her looks Accustomed to her To sleep in my dressing room. You're supposed to be in the audience laughing at my jokes. I was in the audience. What? When I fall asleep, the usher picks me up and carries me down here. <laughs> Rochester, I don't know what to do with you. In the first place, you, you can't cook. You always give me an argument. You can't iron a shirt. You cause me a lot. Will you give me one reason why I've kept you all these years? I haven't got blue eyes. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, here, do me a favor, will you? Uh, put some cufflinks in my shirt there. Yeah, okay. Right, I have to wear it tonight when I go to that opening. All right. Good. Gee, that Andy is great. Boss? What? Uh, since you're not going home, would it be all right with you if I took the night off? Why? What do you want to do? Well, I'd like to take my girlfriend Susie to a movie. Oh, well. All right. What time will you be home? I don't know. What time will you be home? <laughs> Why? Well, I'll get it about ten minutes after you fall asleep. Well, if I fall asleep, how will I know that you'll be home in ten minutes? If I thought you knew, we wouldn't be discussing it. <laughs> I figured that. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hello, Andy. Hey, Jack. Jack, I just wanted to say good night and to tell you how much I enjoyed being on your show. Oh, well, thank you, Andy. It was wonderful having you. Well, thank you very much. Hey, I'm going by your house on the way home. Do you want me to drop you off? No, no, thanks. I'm not going home. I'm, I'm going to be working later on tonight. Working? Yes. You see, I'm going to uh, uh, make an appearance at a big opening. Really? Yeah. Jack, you amaze me. You really do. You know, when I finish my show, all I can think about is getting straight home. Now, that's the trouble with you young fellas. Your careers come second. Now, Andy, it's all right to spend time with your family. But you have to keep active. Appearing in front of the public is important. I do benefits, concerts, television shows, premieres. 
These are the things that keep you sharp. That's why I'm doing this opening tonight. Well, you do have a point there, Jack. Well, of course I have a point. You know, you gotta keep the public aware of you. You gotta be seen. Hey, Jack. What? I hope I'm not intruding, but do you think it's possible if I came with you tonight? I mean, I could sing a couple songs at the opening. You really want to? Please, Jack. Well, all right. Have you got a tuxedo? Oh, certainly I have. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll stop by your house while you change, you see? And then we'll rush right over to the premiere. Oh, great. Thank because, you. Because, you know, the show goes on in about a half hour. I'll be ready. Okay. Thanks, Jack, very you're much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, no kidding, Jack. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. I mean, welcome. thank you. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> Such a lot of world to see. We're after that same rainbows and waiting round the bend, my huckleberry friend. Sit down here and rest. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, Mr. Benny, uh, may I have your autograph? Oh, certainly. Oh. Where can I where can I put it on? Oh, well, oh, oh, right, right on here. All right. There you are. And Benny. Oh. Uh. Wait till I tell the girls that Jack Benny autographed my brisket. <laughs> Autograph this for me, please. Yes, of course. Uh, tell me, are you enjoying the show? Yes, but you got more laughs last month at the car wash. <laughs> I know, but look, getting my foot caught in the chain was an accident. <laughs> there you are. Thank you. Joe! Yeah, Joe, do me a favor, will you? Get rid of these fish heads, huh? Okay. <laughs> Move it, will you, Buster? <laughs> Pardon me, but uh, my friend and I were just discussing. Aren't you... Archibald Quayley. <laughs> What would Andy Williams be doing singing in a meat market? I wish I had an answer for that. Andy <laughs> will be working again uh, uh, pretty soon. And look, at this time, when you do your song, put a little more volume into it, you know, a little strong. Well, it's not my fault, Jack. It's just that there are very few butcher shops with good acoustics. <laughs> well, some are better than others. I hope I never find out. <laughs> I put the soup bones in your car. Oh, thanks. What about my, uh, the chicken feet that I ordered? You got them. Jack, what in the world do you do with chicken feet? I put handles on them to make wonderful back scratchers. <laughs> we'll get up and work again pretty soon. I'm just going to get my violin. Good. Excuse me, mister. Would you mind holding my baby for just a second, please? Why not? <laughs> 
Hey, pal, come on. Quit goofing off. You're supposed to be entertaining in here. Come on. <laughs> Ten pounds, that's $4.95. Oh, that's my baby. And he weighs nine pounds. <laughs> you and your big thumb. <laughs> singing duet. Now, we're going to, uh, what do we give him, Andy? Well, here it should be, liver come back to me. <laughs> I don't, you know, you don't have to be so sarcastic. I mean, you asked me to come over here. You thanked me twice. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play without a song. With a song in my heart. With a song in my heart. May I have a key, please? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> With a song in my heart, I behold your adorable face. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have a special announcement to make. During this song, we are going to have a little sale. <laughs> Now, lamb chops are not going to be 89 cents a pound. They will be 59 cents a pound for the length of this song only. <laughs> But the singer is Archibald Quayley. <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to draw for the turkey. Hold us, will you, fella? And the lucky number is 022937. Oh, Who's got it? Hey. Oh, two, two, nine, three, seven. Hey, that's me. Hey, Jack, I won the turkey. <laughs> and you were the one that was complaining. Keep <laughs> safe. Thank you. 